We are currently undergoing the COVID-19 pandemic crisis with lockdowns in many countries throughout the globe. I hope, dear viewer, that you and your family are doing fine. Because of the lockdown, many companies are suffering financially and had to stop hiring or they even started to let go employees. Unemployment has skyrocketed in the US in an unprecedented manner. In this context, it seems urgent to deploy tools to enable a safe deconfinement of the population. In particular, it is critical that the effective reproduction number, RT, that is the average number of persons that an infected individual contaminates, be kept below 1. Indeed, if RT exceeds 1, then COVID-19 will be out of control again at an exponential rate. Any tool useful to reduce the reproduction number should thus be considered. One of them, which has been argued to be the backbone of a response to the current pandemic according to the WHO, the World Health Organization, is contact tracing. As explained in this great cartoon by Nikki Case, contact tracing consists of tracing the physical contacts of an infected individual to alert them that they may be contagious and to test them and if need be to isolate them before they exhibit any kind of symptom. This can greatly reduce the spread of COVID-19. Contact tracing is usually done manually by interrogating the infected individual. However, this approach is not scalable, it is costly and it is also harmed by the imperfect memory of us humans. To address contact tracing more efficiently, many countries throughout the world have turned to digital data to perform contact tracing, such as using GPS coordinates, credit card payments, and public transport data. However, this other approach may be ineffective and perhaps, more importantly, unnecessary invasive. In the end, for the purpose of controlling the pandemic, what matters more is arguably the physical contacts between individuals. This is where the DP3T protocol enters in play. DP3T is a protocol designed to collect the minimal amount of information while enabling effective contact tracing. Crucially, DP3T has strong privacy-preserving guarantees. DP3T was designed by a team of European scholars led by Carmela Troncoso, a computer science professor at EPFL. The team also includes professors Mathias Payer, Marcel Salaté, James Larus, Jean-Pierre Hubot, and Edouard Bunion of Information in Communication at EPFL. There are also other science collaborators from EPFL, ETH, and other European universities. DP3T stands for Decentralized Privacy Preserving Proximity Tracing. It relies on Bluetooth connections between smartphones, and nearly all computations are done locally on smartphones. The protocol does feature a central server, but this server essentially only serves as an information storage node on which users can write and read public information. The server is not assumed to be trusted. This is what makes DP3T essentially fully decentralized and allows it to prevent mass surveillance. In DP3T, whenever a user is tested positive, he essentially broadcasts this information to all other users by giving it to the central server. Other users can query updates about positive tests from the central server. They can then find out whether they have been in contact long enough with COVID-positive individuals to be at risk. Crucially, all these communications are cleverly encrypted so that, for a complete outsider, all public information resembles noise. This is what guarantees privacy. Now, I should say that there are caveats to the security and privacy guarantees of DP3T, which are discussed in DP3T's uh, white paper and elsewhere, and I will discuss them in a future video. But arguably, the important question is not whether DP3T is fully secure and privacy-preserving, 
It is not. The important question is whether whether GP3T is secure, privacy-preserving, and useful enough to be the solution widely promoted throughout the world for electronic contact tracing. And to be honest, it will definitely depend on the alternatives. Those I've skimmed through so far are Private Kit by MIT, Robert by Inria and Fraunhofer, and NTK by Pep PT. My current understanding is that DP3T seems to yield the best guarantees so far, though Private Kit does allow to collect more information like GPS coordinates, which may be useful for other purposes. And though it seems that Robert could perhaps be improved into a more decentralized scheme, though it has not been done so far. So I would say that the jury is still out, but so far, at least to me and to a few other people, DP3T seems ahead of the pack. Uh, interestingly, DP3T is also quite advanced in terms of development, as the Swiss Army has been called to test it at EPFL. Hopefully, DP3T will be released in the next weeks, and uh, hopefully it will play a key role in making sure that the deconfinement throughout the world is done safely.